there's three types of resistance, right? So if you want to measure maximum muscle capacity, right, the one way to do it is you can do an isometric contraction, which is you fix the position of the joint, you pull as hard as you can and you measure the force that it generates at this point in the range, but you're not doing any measurement here or any measurement there. The other way to do it is it's isotonic, so you take a load, like a 10 pound uh, dumbbell, right, and you pick up, you know, how much can you pick up? I can do 10, can you do 20? But the issue with using a fixed load is that you can only pick up to the weakest point in the range of motion, or what they call the sticking point, meaning if I can pick up 40 pounds here, but I can only pick up 20 pounds here, I can only use 20 pounds, right? Because I can't get through that, what they call sticking point. So it measures to the weakest point in the range of motion. Isokinetic is constant speed or fixed speed. So by fixing the speed, once you hit that speed, you can't accelerate anymore. So now the muscles work from maximum out output all the way through the range. So it lets you measure the maximum capacity of the muscle all the way through the range and dynamic motion. So if you think about the feel, think about when you go to a, a, a hotel and the revolving door, when you push on the door, it doesn't go any faster. That's isokinetic. Right, you're pushing harder, but it's not accelerating. So the beauty of that is it gives you that, that maximum effort all the way through the range. So you know how strong the muscle is all the way through the range. And then if there's a deficit, you'll also know the deficit because it's still working as hard as it can. Okay? And then if you want to make a muscle stronger, it works the same way. If I work isometrically, I, only, I get stronger here with a little bit of carry flow, carry over on each side of that point. If I work with isotonics, I'm really maximizing my sticking point right, because that's the weak point that's maxim being maximized. But isokinetically, I'm maximizing my, my training all the way through the range. So if you want to make somebody stronger, if you use isokinetic resistance, they'll actually get stronger faster than the other two options. And that's just in research and print, that's not my opinion. Okay, so this machine, what it does is, it's called isolated joint, so we pick a joint and we isolate it. So I'm only going to use my elbow, or I'm only going to use my wrist, or I'm only going to use my knee, so there's no substitution. So if you think about when you use a leg press machine, right, you're using the ankle, the, the knee, and the hip. So you're not exactly sure which one you're really measuring, you're measuring the group. With this machine, you just measure one of those. And the idea is, if each one of those is a, is a, is a link in a chain, and somebody's injured, and you want to measure one particular link, that's where you use this machine. You're just going to measure the knee, you're just going to measure the wrist, or you're just going to measure the shoulder. And some joints there's direction, so there's like extension flexion for the shoulder, abduction, adduction. So you can pick the different planes that you want to test over. All right. So the easiest way to, to learn the machine is to use the machine. In regards to the data, what we're measuring is, is really two things. We're measuring uh, force, so how much they put out, we call it a torque because it's a rotary. And then, and then position, so where is the person in the range of motion when we're measuring the force. Okay. What you guys can do is you can stream the data out the side here, okay, as an analog output, and then you can read it and connect it to something else. So, for example, do you work with EMG here? Mm -hmm. Right, so when did the muscle turn on and how much force did it generate? The EMG would tell you when the muscle turns on, we would tell you how much force it generated and when, where the joint was when the force was generated. That's how you use the two together. If you want to turn it on, you just, there's a switch over here with uh, two dots, a circle with a dot on the outside, that's off, circle with a dot on the inside. It's on. <clears throat> when you turn it on, it turns on everything. Which EMG system do you use? Delsys. Oh, Apart that's what this is. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is wired for the Delsys. If you want to take this, if you want to take our signal and put it right in the Delsys. Okay. If you want to put our signal into the mocap, I guess that motion capture. Mm -hmm. That is. That piece of paper you have back there tells you which channel each of these are, so torque, position, velocity, direction. Um, you just hardwire it into the connector. Okay. There's one down there. You pull this off, and then that would go right into your motion capture system. So that's how you get the raw data out, or the real time data. Okay? All right, you guys want to come a little bit closer right so you can see the screen. Mm -hmm. So the name of the program is HUMAC, which is Human Assessment Computer. So if I right click on this, it's gonna go open file or open, and that'll start the program. So when you start the program, this is what we call the input arm and there's no attachments in it. That's the way you wanna start it because there are strain gauges here and you wanna zero out the strain gauges so it doesn't see any force. 
So let's position the input adapter as shown. So we can move this a little bit. So as shown means straight up and down, and that little red tick at the top, it's just the, the red is over that gap right there, okay? When that's lined up and nobody's touching it, just press start. It's a touch screen. And then what'll happen is when it's ready to rock, the OK button will go green, we touch that, and now you'll notice this is live, and we're ready to use it, okay? So there are two ways to use it. You can use it with protocol, so that means we pick a patient, we pick a protocol, we collect the data inside here, right? And then we can export it if we want to export it or print it if we want to print it. The other way of using it, which is the way uh, most researchers do it, they're not using a protocol, they just want a stream of data, like give me three reps real fast. They go in what's called dashboard, but before they do that, I'm gonna do utilities and I'm gonna do auxiliary outputs. So these are the auxiliary outputs. So. This is the front end to this, right, where the, the stuff comes out. So your channels are turned on, so this enable, just leave them on all the time. And then basically you can adjust the gain if you want to adjust the gain on the signal, okay? You can adjust an offset and you can also flip the signal or rectify the signal too. The HUMAC has a help system, so if you want to know what the auxiliary outputs do, if you click help, it just explains it right here, okay? So. In yes. what circumstances will we change the game? Do you think the signal's really small? If you're doing a really small muscle, and we'll try to pop it up. So like, if we change it on there from one to 1.5 or 2.5, do it here. You can it there. The other thing too is you can, um, So the larger the gain, if we're doing really large outputs, it could clip. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Clip the top. Yep. Um, oh, then the other thing too is what you want to do is you have to calibrate the signals, right? Because we're just sending a voltage out to the thing. So the way you calibrate the signals is you just put, there's a written procedure there, but what you'll do is you'll put a known value, a weight on this thing and just drop it. And then that'll give you, you know, X number of volts equals Y value, weight, and then that's your conversion. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Did we want to add? So it doesn't, so meaning, meaning there's the way outputs don't put converted data out, then the outputs just raw voltage. Put the raw voltage yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, that's a good one to ask. Yeah. Yeah, that's, Can that you answer one. some of them on film, and then I know you were going to write type Yeah, sure. So there was a question there about the conversion from volts to Newton meters. Right, and that, so that, it, it, well, that's the answer then. So mm -hmm. basically the output's a volt, the output's not Newton meters or anything mm -hmm, right. like that. So what you would want to do is you'd want to calibrate to the volts. Mm -hmm. So you're going to drop a known weight and look at the output and say, oh, okay, I know that this weight is that output. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it should be just the, the peak, whatever the peak load is, just take the peak output and that's your conversion factor on that. Okay. okay. How often do people calibrate? So the... The manual says calibrate once a month. That being said, I've never seen this thing direct. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's a simple strain gauge on a shaft in a controlled environment. The old machines used to be hydraulic and they would leak a little bit, so you kind of wouldn't know unless you checked. But these, they're pretty spot on. Um, can you adjust the analog outputs torque? Did you use gravity? Okay. So the analog outputs are just the raw signal, we're not doing anything with gravity there, okay? When you're using the HUMAC and the HUMAC's collecting data, then you have a choice of turning on gravity correction, and if you turn on gravity correction before you start the test, it'll tell you, for example, for knee extension flexion, I'll say put the leg straight out, lock it, tell them to relax, weigh the limb, and go. Mm -hmm. And then that'll have the, then it'll have the correction for you. And then with the HUMAC too, what it does is it saves the raw data, so you have the choice of saying, oh, you know what, I want to see the data without the gravity correction. So you can turn the gravity correction off in the preferences, and then when you pull up the report, the data will not be gravity corrected. And the opposite is true. If you want to go back to gravity corrected, just go to the preferences, click that box, and as long as you weighed the limb before you did the test, you'll have gravity corrected data. So basically, uh, always test. weigh the limb. For the research side, yeah. Right. Do it. I mean, clinicians <clears throat> never do it. Right. But I don't think they need it anymore. The other question is, can you export the data? So on the reports, I almost did that. When you're on the help section, don't do that. It doesn't do anything. Um, so if I go to pick a patient like me, if I click reports, 
uh, pick a report. So if you want the raw data, just click Excel. And what that'll do is that'll export the data to Excel. And then you've got the raw calculated data. So if you use the HUMAC to collect the data, then we can export it to Excel for you. Those torques are in. So there, it depends on how you have the HUMAC set. So if you go into the preferences, so I'm gonna, uh, don't say this. So if I go file, preferences, so if I click metric, I'll get it in metric. If I click US units, I'll get it in US units. <coughs> If I turn on the gravity correction and I weigh the limb, I'll get it corrected, or I won't get it corrected. Okay, so again, what it does is it looks, if the data is inside the HEMAT, we look at the preferences, then we generate the report. So you can toggle however you please. Is the calibration for the velocity and position pins similar? Put it in a certain angle and then measure the voltage and it scales linearly? Yeah. And okay. so, yeah. Okay. This has an optical encoder in it too, so. The output is still a voltage though, right? Yeah, it's okay. a voltage, yeah. And then what about for the velocity pin? You're gonna look at, I think. Will we like set it to just rotate at a certain velocity, measure the? I don't think you need to calibrate the, okay. the velocity because it's an optical encoder. It's gonna, you know what I'll do? Give me your email. I'll have you talk to Rich, who's the brother of the scientist that that went on to MIT. Well, this was actually his thesis in 1980, was to computerize one of these things. So if you like talking about stuff like that, he likes talking about it too. So what I'll do is I'll give you, um, I'll give you his email address, or if you can, just put together the questions. Okay. Or a phone call might be easier. I just figure it's the yeah. same question as Scott's first one, but instead of for the torque pin, the position right. velocity, in case he wants to, we want the, to convert the raw data for mm -hmm. that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure how that velocity is coming out of there. Okay. Um, so, but we'll get to the answer for it. And the last thing you had, the most effective mode for getting the EMG back muscle activation. I don't know the answer to that. That's something you guys can find out. <laughs> we'll That's probably do, we'll probably just collect both okay. isometric and isokinetic and yeah. then, yeah. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like we do now. Pick that larger one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's two ways to use it. The one way is, collect the data with the HUMAC system. The other way is just use the machine as a resistance device and you collect the data through the analog outputs. So I'd, we just recommend just leave the anabolic op outputs on. So whether you use them or not, it doesn't matter, just leave them on. So assuming you were taking the data out of our system, out of the, the auxiliary outputs and put it somewhere else, the way you control the HUMAC would probably be through the dashboard. So we click dashboard, top left corner, are the four most popular patterns. If you don't see the pattern you want, what you would do is you would click pattern, and that would list all the different patterns and you'd find the pattern you want. So it's shoulder, elbow, wrist, hip, knee, and ankle. And within those patterns, the different planes that you can do. If you double click on one, it just puts it in the fourth value. So if we were to do, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do shoulder internal external rotation because then it's just a different one, but it's the same. Mm -hmm. Right, so shoulder internal external rotation. So then the question is, do you want to do the right side or the left side? So if we were going to do the right side, I just click right, okay? If I need to know how to set it up, I click set up, and it shows me how to set it up, okay? So if I'm looking at this, it says uh, position the ROM stops. So these are mechanical stops, so this machine uses software stops. You demonstrate a range, we put software stops in, and then for secondary safety, we have mechanical stops that back up the, the software stops. So what it's saying is, so inversion, uh, eversion, it's a, the color of that S is green, and that's black. So if you look at this, you'll see there's a teal here, right? And the white in that case is black. So that's an S, right? That was one was, and that one was B, B. So that's how you ROM stops like that, okay? In regards to what attachments you use, if you double click on these guys, it shows you the different attachments that you want to use. Okay, so I'm going to go grab those real quick. Put you right over here. So those are the second most popular attachments. So I just leave those on the first shelf. In regards to how we set the machine up, so the chair rotation is a zero. We're not going to use the chair. So if you look at the chair.
there's handles on each side so you can operate the chair from either side that you're standing on. Okay, if I want to rotate the chair pedestal, I pick up this guy, I can rotate the chair. You'll also notice these are green, these are black, the number lines. So same thing, if I was doing a, a right side knee, it would say set this to a green 40. So I would do that and snap it down. If I want to move the seat back for and after the patient, I turn this wheel. If I want to raise and lower the seat, I can grab either one of these handles. So I usually grab up here, I pull here, I can lower it, I can raise it. And I want to put the handle down. If it doesn't go down, that means the gear rack is, is hitting it. You just move it a little bit. It should always be easy to go down. So for this pattern, we're not going to use the chair. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it up here, which is here. And I'm going to move it out of the way. Which is there. Okay. So this is the dynamometer. In regards to the dynamometer settings, the first thing it's saying is set it at 70, the tilt. So this is what we use to control tilt. If I loosen this, so the teeth spread, it's spring-loaded. There's a scale here, so if I want to go to 70, I go to 70, and then I just tighten it up like that. If you don't have to go nuts, just snug it up. I'm just going to do that. Okay. So the dynamometer height, it says, is 3, and the dynamometer rotation is a black 30. So again, just like this has two different colors, so does this. So that's the teal 30, the black 30 is over here, the height of three is there. So there are two handles, you only have to pick up one. I rotate my dynamometer to the black 30, and push it down to the height that I want. So I'm just going to put it a little bit higher. So now I want to put my attachments on, but this pattern is basically the person sitting like this and going like this, but this is in the wrong position. So if I need to get the input arm past the stop. If you pull these pins out, they open up. I'll let you go like that. And now if I grab this guy. He wants to exercise. I already know how to do it. Do you it. want to do it? <laughs> I'll do it. Okay, you go can ahead. do it. No, if you, you haven't can. done it, you might as well feel the resistance. Yeah. It's pretty cool, actually. I'm going to be working on this a lot, but... So what you're going to do is you're going to put your arm in like that and like that, okay? Is that your throwing shoulder? This is my throwing shoulder. <laughs> uh, oh, really? Do you play baseball? Uh, I used to play football. Okay. Oh, you're going to like this. Yeah. We're going to get you back. Well, if it was back, I have way more range on this arm than mine. We're going to get you back in the uniform, dude. <laughs> All right. So. So it's going to go... No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's move yeah. those stops up a little bit. And it's going to be in powered mode, too. Yeah, no. Okay. So now we're going to set the range for you to work through, okay? Yeah. So the first thing, though, when you look at the person, so your one shoulder is, is low, so the numbers on the screen are just kind of recommendations, but then you just use it to sort of square it up for that person. Okay? Now, anatomical position. So right now the machine has no idea where you are. Mm -hmm. So we need to set a starting point, like a set point. So if you look at the picture, it says zero and zero is neutral. So that's your arm perpendicular. Yep, so hold your arm out like that. Yep. And I'm gonna click set AZ. And when I do that, now this is gonna measure range of motion, okay. okay? Then I need to set a range for you to work through. The easiest way to do it, if I pick track patient ROM, I just come in here, right? come out there that's good and then I press set wrong and what that does is that sets software stops oh cool got it and then we follow it up with setting the hardware stop so it tells us where to put them so a green T and a G and that goes here and that goes there okay green T and G okay so the four modes the first mode is CPM which is isokinetic just always on so what happens is with isokinetic resistance, the patient's either moving the machine and the machine is acting like a brake, or the patient is resisting, so like a concentric contraction, or the patient is resisting the machine and the patient's acting like a brake and the machine is doing the accelerator. With CPM, it's always on. With isokinetic, concentric, eccentric down here, the machine doesn't move unless you move. So it'll all come together in a second. I press start here. So if I move the leg out, just relax. 
So continuous passive motion. So you're moving at 15 degrees per second. You're not going any faster, you're not going any slower. If I wasn't, you're, I'm not doing anything. You're right. not supposed to do okay. anything, right? You're doing exactly right. Don't do anything. <laughs> um, so the, if you're a therapy patient, you're trying to increase range of motion, reduce swelling, they might have a mode like this. Or you can use it, like if you resist it, pull in a little bit. There you go. So now yeah. that's an eccentric contraction, right? Your muscles get longer. If you keep pulling in, that's a concentric contraction. Your muscles getting shorter, right? So if I wanted to really build up your ex your internal rotators, keep pulling in, you're going to get a nice workout. Yeah. You get the idea? Okay. So in the research world, you guys use isometric, right, and isokinetic. Mm -hmm. So if we want to use isometric, I'm going to pick isometric. I need to pick an angle, right? So I'll just leave it at zero, and if I press start. It's going to say, well, right now you're at minus 16, but you said you wanted to be at zero. So I'm going to move your arm out until it locks and pull in. There you go. There's your force. So your pulling in is not you pulling your body away from the machine. Mm -hmm. It's you standing up straight and you rotating your arm, right? We're trying to mm -hmm. measure your arm. That's it. And that's the max force, your isometric force on there. And it won't let me go you can't. externally rotate. Right. Nope. It's yeah. only one direction. And the reason it's only one direction is because because you're not moving, we don't know which, you know, we have to basically say, just pull this way, so mm -hmm. we know what the force is, right? If I wanted to measure external rotation, you would relax. I would go to eccentric, concentric. And now if you externally rotate, we'll measure the force externally, okay? So that's isometric, right? So if we're using the auxiliary outputs, the stuff would just be streaming out there. If we were doing a test with the HUMAC, we just collect the data inside. So if I want to change your position for the isometric, I can press, I usually grab the attachment, I can press unlock, I can move you someplace new, and I can lock you, and now you can, I think it's external, yep, relax. So that's isometric. The other force that you use is what's isokinetic. So this is constant speed. It's just like, oh, I'm sorry, I need to take my off. It's um, isokinetic. So what that is, is you're gonna, move at a fixed rate, but you're going to be moving. So it'll go no faster than some set velocity? Yep, Okay. exactly. So I'm going to have it at 60, which is pretty common. So if I just start here, so it says move to that. So pull in, so you can pull in, right? Externally rotate, pull in harder. You know you're not going to accelerate. Externally rotate harder. So if you pull as hard as you can, just do three reps for it. One, yep. See the curves are overlaying. That's the idea behind isokinetic. Mm -hmm. And if you had pain or weakness, pull one more time. It would look like that. And it would consistently look like that. So that's the beauty of isokinetic is, I want to measure how strong you are all the way through the main range. Because if you were doing an isotonic, you would just see a velocity curve where it would go up and down, but you wouldn't know the force. And the idea is, here's your force, here's where you were in the range, so I know each point. So for example, if this was consistent, I'd go, yeah, well, you know, he's obviously got a deficit there. Look what, look what we're seeing. That's the idea behind isokinetics. Pretty simple, right? So that's using the dashboard. The other way of doing it is I want to use the HUMAC to collect the data, and then I'm going to take the HUMAC out of it, out somehow. So if I did a quick question. Yep. Are those settings saved for the trial? So no, because this is just, I just wanted the machine to add some resistance. So the other way to use it is I'm going to pick a patient. Okay, we'll just use me. And when you put your people in, if you want, you can put in, you know, their birth date, their height, their weight. So a little bit of demographics there. The tester, you guys can also, the diagnosis. You have group one and group two, so if you guys have study groups, you can edit these lists and put in numbers or however you want to identifiers, okay? So if you pick a patient, right, then you say I want to do a test, and I want to do a shoulder internal external rotation test, standing, then I can pick a protocol, okay? So that, let's see if there's something simple. Yeah, here you go. So here's an isometric protocol, okay? What side do you want to do? You can test in any order you like, the right side, the left side, the fast speed, the slow speed. We'll do the right side. 
All sets means we want to do every single set on the screen. Single set means we do one set, come back to the screen, have the choice of doing the next set. We'll do all sets. Here's where it's going to remember everything because it knows who you are. It knows the pattern you want to do So and the protocol. So first it starts off with a green S and a black P. So my black P is over here. My green S is here. We're not using the chair. Our dynamometer is tilted at 70. Our height is adjusted to you. The rotation is set at 30. I click OK. The anatomical position is your arm perpendicular from your body as it shows us on the screen. We need to set a range of motion for you to work through. So I can either put you in external rotation and press ER, put you in internal rotation and press IR, set ROM, that sets my software stops. And then I would look here to move my hardware stops or if I clear this, I can do track patient ROM and it's gonna measure the endpoints. So it's the same way, it's a different way to do the same thing. Set ROM, same thing, S and now with black C. So the only thing you have to remember to make sure is when you're doing something like isometric, right? You wanna make sure that the, the angles that you wanna measure are within the range of motion that the patient has because if they're not, it won't let you get there, okay? So if I press set ROM, my stops are set, I click OK. So the first thing it says is move the 15, pull, and it's a five second pull, and it's three repetitions. So that's one, relax, a five second rest. And you can program the rest. You can build all this stuff, yep. You can pick the display you want to see, the length of the contraction, how much of a rest, where, they want, where you want the person to So this to is see. just like a default protocol, but we can create our own. You can create as many as you want. Okay. Yep. You can mix it in modes, so you can do isometric and isotonic, you know, or isokinetic, mm -hmm. whatever you want, and relax. And now what's going to happen is I think you might have it set where it automatically moves. Yeah. So there's an option when you build a protocol, do you want the computer to move the arm? That was yes, that's why your arm moved to zero. So now the same thing, so now you do the next set, so you pull, uh, pull. Oh, a different angle. Yep, yeah. So this protocol is plus 15, zero, minus 15. Three reps at each, five second hold, five second rest. So what you could be doing now if you wanted is, kind of the belts and suspender approach, is you could be reading the data out the analog in outputs while you're gonna have the HUMAC collect the data inside, and then you've got both the raw data and the HUMAC data, which can export the raw data. Is there a way to make it so it's not dependent on my, oh, like my wrist? Hold on. Something on the okay, so I can, how's that? Okay, yeah, sorry about that. The basketball players are getting stronger, so the NBA state teams have been buying these things lately, which they've had them before, but now all of a sudden it's like, yeah, that thing's not long enough. I'm like, oh. it's been long enough for 30 years. Yeah, no. <laughs> it not be long enough. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, we need to be. So I said, well, how much longer do you need it? The guy goes, about like a good solid five centimeters. I'm like, Whoa. five centimeters? <laughs> okay. So then if we wanted to do the other side, right, we would click left. I would flip you around. We'd do the other side. So you have typically you collect data for both sides. I'll just click OK. If you don't do both sides, it says, hey, you haven't done all sides, are you sure you don't want to do the other side? And also while you're testing, you can also do a preview. So you can look at your data while you're going along and go, yeah, I like that data or I don't like that data. And if you don't like it and you want to do it again, you would just click on it, press single set, and it would test right over the old data. So it doesn't save the old data set if you say I want to test over. Mm -hmm. okay? But if we're all done and we say yes, it's going to save your data. And then if you want to see the results, because it's an isometric protocol, it says, well, the only report you get is the isometric report, right? That's supposed to, isokinetics have a whole bunch of different reports. So if I do preview, it's going to look like what we just saw, right? So the peak torque, the average torque, the slope, the half time, the peak torque, and the time to peak torque. So is this the only way to get the raw time series data from the pins, or is it also Nope, so if you want the raw data here, I would just do Excel. Right, that's what the Excel is. Yeah, right, and that'll dump out the raw data. So, in terms of order of events, 
if we have our Delsa system on, yep. you know in terms of that's on, this is connected, the problem is it's down there, cord length, and how... Time synchronization, is that what you're asking? Yeah. So I have a brother named Rich who <laughs> likes to talk about that he stuff. He likes to talk yeah, about that Yeah, you can stuff. talk about that kind of stuff. Yeah, because yeah. that's what I'm wondering. Like, if we have it started down there, but then we have it to be, we have to be here with the subject, you yep. know, how we sync it all. Yep. Okay, yep. so we'll talk to Rich. Yeah, okay. he'll help with that. Okay. Maybe, would he do a Zoom call as well? You do whatever you want. Oh, he could kind of Just show us maybe real want. time. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So that's the three reps, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the process for, for doing the test, whether you're doing isometric or isokinetic. The screens are all the same, mm -hmm. right? So the two ways you're doing it is just from the dashboard, the Humex saves nothing, and all the data comes out the auxiliary outputs for you guys to collect and save and manage. The other way of doing it is um, collect the data in the Humex, and then you can export the data in report form or in Excel if you want, or do them both simultaneously. Those are kind of the options, whatever you want, that's what you can do. Also, so for researchers within the Humac system, they tend to want, you know, instead of um, like summary tests or a synopsis of tests, we give you, for example, if you did an isokinetic test, you may say, I want to see, well, what's the calculated values for every single repetition, right? So tell me the peak torque, but not the average peak torque. I want to know the peak torque for every single rep. Mm -hmm. So in the HUMAC, we put in what's called a per repetition report. So if you guys come down here, this per repetition report, so this is an isokinetic test that was done at 60 degrees and 180. And what it does is it gives you the actual, so here's the curve, so I kicked out, I pulled back, I kicked out, I pulled back, extension flexion, but where when the athletic trainers were here, we just looked at, well, what's the peak torque? Mm -hmm. okay, what's the average peak torque? What's mm -hmm. the best rep? The researchers say, no, what was the peak torque for every single repetition? So that's why this report is here. So this is five repetitions. So it's rep one, rep two, rep three, torque work, power, speed, range of motion for each rep. Mm -hmm. And then for the high speed test, we did 15 repetitions. So same thing, the individual data. So if you want the HUMEC to give you the calculated data, we can give you the calculated data for every repetition, okay? What you can also do in regards to managing data, there's something called summary. So you can also tell the HUMAC, hey, why don't you go find this group of patients? So when we put somebody in the machine, we identify them by gender, we identify them by birth date, pathology, group, 13 different things, I think it is. So what you can do is you can say, hey, go find a particular pattern that used a particular protocol, we give it a, a name. So basically I started with the whole database, I just narrowed it down to knee extension flexion two speed test. Then what was previously my background information becomes my filters. So here's where we can say things like go find all the males. You put something in. You could even type in like find all the soccer players, right ACL injury. Yeah, so you'd be pulling from the list that yeah. you put down ahead of time from your pull down list so there's consistency, but yes, that's what you could do. So basically, if I read down this list, you'll see, so it's, your choices are the date of the test, the age, the height, the weight, the gender, the diagnosis, the injury, the injury date, the surgery, the surgery date, the doctor, group one, group two, and the tester. So I just wanna see my subjects. Mm -hmm. And they're all pull downs because Free type never works. Mm -hmm. All right, so all tests are most recent tests. So all tests means if you tested me five times for that protocol, you get all five of my tests. Or no, I just want Rob's most recent test in the data set. And then how do you want the data sorted? So if you're working with normals, you might say right, left, dominant, non-dominant. If you're working with someone with an involved side, you might say sort my data involved versus uninvolved. So just pick however you want it done. And then you do summarize. So what it does is it reads through that joint, those protocols, those filters, sorted the way you wanted it sorted. And then what you can do is you can dump it to Excel. And if you dump it to Excel, what you're gonna see is you'll get a line for every single repetition motion. So like one knee extension flexion is two lines, right? And 
it gets really big. Mm -hmm. right. But basically, so you'll see the side, the peak torque, the peak torque, the body weight ratio, right? Go across. So the work, the work to body weight ratio. But it, it's all the parameters, so there's like isometric mispin with isokinetic, so you gotta kind of figure out which ones you're looking for. But that gives you all the calculated parameters for all the repetitions for the group. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to go through those reports, the per repetition report, and typing them all in, you can just use this. Mm -hmm. Whereas the athletic trainer would just say, average together with the people and tell me what the group average is and let me compare the individual to the group. Mm -hmm. You guys would say, I want to look at the data underneath the average and do my own averaging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's how you would use the group summary. And the key to that, yeah, I would show. Um, I have a question. Yes. To, to know the distance from yep. the axis of rotation to where we're applying the force, is that is that what this number yep, is? Yes, that's okay. what that is, yeah. Right. And when we put the patient background information, when it tells us to set the person up, there's a field there called uh, adapter length. You could type that's what in that, is? Yeah, okay. that engraving to, if you want to, to redo that setting. Be good to know. Yep. Same for the knee. I asked the same question. Okay. <laughs> all the, you, know, you, all, you can actually, everything, it, it's, the settings are the average guy, right? Or the average person. And then you adjust it to the person that you're working with. So the next time that person gets on the machine, you can rebuild it. Mm -hmm. So like some clinics that we work with that are really busy, you know, they have a tech and the tech sets the machine up and then the patient comes in and the PT does the magic. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the way you do it. So um, the unit of measure is here to here? Yeah, so what it's doing is, it's, it's, so if you think about it, it's the center of the, of the dynamometer, that black dot, okay. the dynamometer shaft. Okay. Right, that's the axis, and that lines up with the axis of rotation on my joint. Okay. Right. And then so what you guys want to know is how you calibrate the machine, right? That would be a good thing to know. Mm -hmm. so that's what we're going to do now. Because that's pretty much how we interact with collecting data and getting the data out, okay? The last piece of the puzzle is how do we calibrate this puppy? So first thing you take this apart. So calibration from the screen, if you do utilities, calibration, so I go to utilities and I go to calibration. So we would pick who's doing the calibration. And then down here is something called weights. So there are four weights over there and they have a four digit number on them. It never changes. So I've already typed them in, but what's important to know is they're in order of lightest to heaviest and all you need to really pay attention to is just the lightest one. And the reason being is when we do our verification, we want to know exactly which plate is on it, and that's the lightest one. That's our rule of thumb. So calibration, if, if I click calibrate, from the top down, it says move the chair away from the dynamometer. So that's all the way back. Set the chair at zero rotation. So the rotation there is zero, okay? So that the chair doesn't hit the, the weights when they fall. Set the dynamometer tilt to zero. So right now this is set to 70 from when we were using it the last time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this by doing this and doing this. And I snug it, you know, go nuts. Where does it show that it's zero? Right there, there's a scale. Oops. Uh, yeah, and I'm off on one. Nice. There you go. Okay. Um, lock the dynamometer in a full down position. So that means I pick this up. <laughs> So full down, and the dynamometer is balanced, so it moves like this, like this, it doesn't move like that. So full down, it's all the way down like that, and then I lock it. Then it says, position the input adapter at 12 o'clock. So I gotta open this up, because I want this guy all the way up like that. And then it says, Place the ROM stops at a teal U and a gray U. So if I look down here, my gray U is here. My teal U is there, okay? Then it says set the knee hip input adapter at number 45, the pin should drop in. So this is the pin, the pull pin. And if I get the knee hip adapter, and I know it's knee hip, it says knee hip. <laughs> 
take this out. So that pin locks in and just tighten this up. And then it says, rest the input adapter against the TOU stop. So that's this guy down here. So I just take this guy and I put him down like that. I hit the checkbox. Now it says move the input adapter uh, towards the teal Q, which means just pick it up a little bit and it's gonna lock. So I pick this up a little bit, it locked. I hit the checkbox. And then it says place 100 pounds on the arm, weights one, two, three, and four. So again, the most important thing to remember, the only thing you need to remember in regards to putting the weights on, just put the lightest one on first, okay? Uh, probably a good idea would be to, to write one on it just to start. Recording. All right, we're good. Ready? So to put the weights on, there's a little push pin. Don't use your finger, use the weight. So just put it on with a little angle. You can catch that little push pin and slide it on and again. It's the lightest weight, so 0.23 is your lightest weight. Just make sure you put that one on first. Yeah. yeah. That's why I had to pick up. We used to use we used to have certified weight, and then the certified company decided we needed to buy a thousand weights at a time. So and certified weights are expensive because they forge them, then they drill them. Then they use lead to set the weight, you know, to get the weight right. So they're crazy expensive, but also a thousand weights, like just shipping a thousand weights in one shot. Then you got a storm. Yeah. And for us, that's like a year's worth of weights. So we're like, you know, we'll just buy a scale, <laughs> get, get it calibrated. So then you click the checkbox, this guy, it goes up and over. So the first time what it's doing is it's, it's, it's weighing or calibrating itself. And then we'll do it two more times to verify. So it, it'll measure what it sees and it'll tell us this is what I saw. Is that right? So if you want to use the deltas, this is the cable that you use and the little dongle that should have given you a plus minus five volt adapter, I think it is analog adapter. Maybe before you leave we can goes in there. check our device to see if yep. the is there. Is Todd who you're working with with Delsis or do no. you, what do you call him the office? We would with Delsis actually. Oh gosh, what's your name? So then it says um yeah, place a hundred pounds on the arm, so this is the verification. Don't so don't do anything different, just leave it the way it is and click the checkbox. So now it's measuring it. Michaela? Michaela Piero? No. 
Uh, I usually work with Todd, and the other guy on the inside is Brian. If you call Delsis, you'll get Brian. Okay. You get stuff. So this is the one that you want to use to um, motion capture your bare wires. You're gonna hardwire it in. You're gonna hardwire it to this guy. Okay. That paper back there has to pin out, yeah. and then it plugs in right over here. It goes this way. Wait for Julie. Sorry. <laughs> You're good. So you hardwire your mo motion capture system to this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then once the wires are in, just take this and it just plugs right in here. Like that. Well, not like that. You gotta line it up to do it right. Bend out of the way. There you go. And then just push it in hard. I left it in kind of loose so you guys can take it out. Mm -hmm. So now in the calibration, it says place 25 pounds on the arm, which means it takes three plates off. That's why I just always put the lightest one on. Or write a number one on it, which mm -hmm. might be a better idea. Okay. <laughs> or just tell people to fast forward. Check box. And then you click OK. Then it says, I was looking for 154.4, 152.4, I saw 152.5, 0.8, 0.3. So if the word success, that's what you want. If it says fail, you probably didn't use the right weights mm -hmm. or you put the wrong weight on. You didn't put the lightest weight on when you're doing the last round. Mm -hmm. Okay, other than that. It, it shouldn't it fail. Yeah. <laughs> and then this, this is 152.4 was the calculated value. It's all 152.5. And on the expected value of the lightweight, 40.8, it's all 40.8. So it's Can I take good. just a photo of that because that's not going <laughs> to be like that? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, dropping in your video. Yeah. There you go. You ever use Snagit, the program Snagit, for screen recordings? Uh, the guys yes. from Tech, TechSmith? That program's really good. It's super easy for stuff like that. Um, also, what the Humac has is a log. So there's a error log or calibration log in this case so it knows that we calibrated it on the 16th of March so you've got that also if you ever have a problem and an error comes up what we're going to ask you to do is send us the error log so there's two there's this one utilities uh, error log last choice which is kind of a high level error log that we would look and it might be something simple like you know, they go, well, when I pushed on it, the arm moved faster than it was supposed to. It's supposed to be isokinetic. Well, that's because your torque threshold set too low. We kind of can figure that out here. But if it's something a little deeper than that, then what we'd ask you to do is, if you do file, um, let's see, database, backup, and we're gonna want, oops, wait, yeah, we're gonna want this guy, the error log there. That's a little deeper error log. So that kind of gives us all the raw data and all the settings on the machine so we can figure out what's going on. But that's it. So when you're all done, what you're going to do is do file, exit. That brings you back here. When you want to turn it off, if you do this, you do power, you do or power, you do shut down. Once the screen goes black, and then what I always do is I always take all the attachments off so the next person that uses it doesn't have to clean up. And I put the stops on the top so that the person doesn't accidentally hit the stops. I get this ready for the next person. Like that, and then to turn it off, circle with the dot on top turns it off. <laughs>